What is up guys? Sorry back again, also known as the Black Gentleman. And today, I probably look really tired, but I'm not gonna let the craft suffer for it. So you know, if I if I'm, if I'm not gonna hold myself to a certain standard, then why do it at all? But let's be no I'm tired. <laughs> but I wanna get this review out. Uh the, today's review is on Iori Yagami from uh King of Fighters. Although technically speaking, he really popped up. I believe it was King of Fighters 95. Uh, fun story time, because I have a story time on fight for all my characters. Uh, when, it came, when it came to Yori, I felt very differently about him than I did about Keo. Keo took me a little while to warm up to, because honestly, I just can't see any other SNK character outshining Terry Bogard. Except maybe uh, Ryo Sasaki, but he doesn't have a figure, so... He's nor here nor there, <laughs> but yeah, uh, Iori. I think I took up I, I took up with him pretty quick. Uh, first time I ever I ever saw the character was in the uh, KOF '95. Saw him in like a, I think a Game Informer magazine. No, no, excuse me, Game Pro magazine. Back in those days, people we used to have magazines. Um, and eventually, I think like a year or two later, uh, the PlayStation One came out with their port of King of Fighters '95, which I got for my birthday. Low times were atrocious, but then again, it was PlayStation 1, you know, like these fives that go at lightning speeds. Still looking for one of those. Help. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, um, Iori, uh, except for it, uh, he had very, a very strong 90s vibe to him. Very, he seemed very, I don't know, kind of golf, edgelord, emo kind of a character. Except for probably it was time. But overall, cool. I, I still like him today, and I think he's aged somewhat well. <laughs> um, other iterations, he actually changed his clothes a little bit. He, changed, he looks, looks different. But I like this old, fa I like this well, I mean, old fashioned. But I like his '98, or uh, I should say '95 through. God, when did he change his outfit finally? I think he changed it in well later on. But anyway, he, he, he's even more of his classic outfit. But as usual. I'm gonna play a little snippet of gameplay and you know some cool stuff about the character that I find cool. So check that out. I'm talking about that cool little anime intro that actually came from King of Fighters 98 or I think it was 99 Dream Match. It's on the Sega Dreamcast. Had a really cool opening, so I took a little snippet from that. Man, uh, I wish we could get like an anime movie to look like that. It'd be awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I, I like to show a few little combos that he can do in the game. I think I think, I think the combos actually came from a different KOF, not the one from 98. I know people who know what I'm talking about. This is all French, so. Sorry, <laughs> but yeah, this 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 cool character and I've uh, one I very much love and I'm, I'm glad that uh, some couples put out. But enough of me jawing. Let's get on to that review, shall we? Boxy comes in. You got a picture of uh, Eeyore right here. Uh, it's a side picture. Let me put the camera up so you can see that. We have that going on there. A little bit of the old school SK artwork. And here on the back, you can see the character himself, some of his accessories and whatnot. See, y'all see, he even has a health bar, which is kind of cool. He's the other side of the box. It's essentially the same picture that you saw before. So, uh, yeah, that's basically it for the box. 
for the first accessory, you get this head here, which is more of a smirking face. It looks very cool, very, uh, very Aori specific. <laughs> he has the, uh, his uh, traditional hair with the big piece of hair coming off, coming kind of in the eye. It's kind of reminiscent of a of the the comb on a rooster. You know how it just kind of flows over. But yeah, looks very good. And yeah, he does have both eyes, which is kind of hard to see because of the hair. But yeah, that's him. It's a little smirk. All right, moving on to the next head. Here's his uh, I don't know if it's so much a yelling, but maybe a laughing head because he he laughs a lot in the game. He has a little bit of a <laughs> laugh type deal thing going on there. So yeah, I think this head's pretty good representing that. But I thought the other head's some pretty good paint work there. Overall, you know who it is. It's a Yori, it's a Yori Yagami, so yeah. Next head. So many heads. Uh, <laughs> here's his uh, head with the grinning teeth. This is probably a head when you know when he's attacked. Maybe he's attacking or getting attacked. A bit of frustration on the face, perhaps. It too looks pretty good. And here are all his various hands. Uh, some of the other um, Storm figures, you're always going to get various possible hands. So I figured I'd just go ahead and lay them all out just to get it all away. This is basically his open hands. And I like the fact that they included the ring. Uh, in some uh, game intros and outros, it's actually shown, shown that he does wear a, a ring on his uh, middle finger on the right hand. So I'm, I'm glad that that was actually included. On these figures, uh, for these hands, it's basically like his open hands, like open palm hands, all uh, made nice enough. And here, are like more like his, yet again, more open hands, but the fingers kind of curved in just a little bit. And those, yet again, are made fairly good. And here we have, I guess, what you would call, call, I guess, this would be kind of a more, I guess, martial arts hands. I guess we, uh, kind of how what I've been going with, so that's that. And here are his more, you know, clawed hands, like he's reaching out to grab or you know to set someone a, a, a flame with his uh, purple flames. So yeah. Moving on from nuts. Also, his uh, has some more accessories as you would expect. These are more of my favorite accessories. Here are his actual attacks. Here is his a uh, fireball that he throws. I believe, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, it's called uh, Dark Thrust. Um, if I'm not mistaken, he typically, he typically just takes his hand, he just waves it across the ground, and this, uh, uh, I guess, this swoosh of fire comes across the ground and just kind of travels across and burns you like so. So there's that. You also get, oops, out of the way. You also get his uh, flaming uppercut thingy, uh, similar, similar Keo, except it's purple. Yeah, uh, he basically leaps into the air with a uh, kind of a spinning motion, and the flames from off the hand, which you know burn did big damage. And this is basically that piece. Unlike Keo's, his is actually easier to put on. You don't have to remove the hand at all. You just take this piece off right here. There we go. And clip the hand in, like cl clip the hand in, which I think is uh, more convenient actually. And last but not least, uh, again similar to Keo, you get a a standing flame for the hand and let's see if we can find the right hand for it to go in I believe it goes in uh, I want to say no not that hand which hand I believe it's one of these hands but you kind of just kind of line up in between the fingers and it just kind of sits in there let me see if I can find it uh, there we go basically like that and you basically have it sitting in his hand I think it's done up pretty nice I really, kind of, I really like it all right, finally, we covered all the accessories. Let's get to the figure itself. And here is the man himself, the scourge of Kyo Kusanagi's life, Iyori Yagami. And I have to say, this is a uh, this is pretty spot on. The only thing I would change is maybe the red pants should be more of a uh, actually in gameplay look kind of almost more burgundy, but that could be just a shade, you know, of game, you know, game pixels and whatnot. But uh, yeah, this, this is him from the front. This is how you get him in box. I want to make sure he had the right and the, the head to come with and the hands that he came with in box. And although I won't lie, I might have him on shelf more time than not. I'm probably just gonna have him posed, kind of like that. <laughs> more time than not, when you see Kyo, he's usually from oddly enough, he's just from the back, and you always see that cool crescent moon design on the back of his uh, 
jacket, which I really like. Well, let's talk about them. Uh, they they got the sculpt down, I think, pretty well. Um, even down to the coat itself and the long, uh, I think it's kind of a uh, Oxford shirt that he's wearing. They even captured that, I feel like, very well. And I, I, I kind of imagine how, his, how, how they would do the body. But uh, unlike most Storm figures, his um, his coat would not is actually part of the body. Now, I, I, I hear it actually, actually cannot be removed, which I'm very okay with. But I forget that's more point, more, worth pointing out. Um, in terms of the, in terms of his uh, belt around here around the legs, I've always wondered what this is for. I know he always has it in game, especially in the early early KOFs. I always figured some type of training belt. You know, I always wondered about that. But on the plus side, it does not get in the way of articulation. We will find out very shortly. But yeah, this, it, again, this guy is very spot on, man. I, I, I dig it. Articulation is the same as you actually come to spec for most strong collectible figures. Um, the head, if you want to get one, you can get you can get a full 360, I believe. Yep, you can. I just broke his neck. But yeah, you can get full 360. But yet again, this being a more human character, you don't really need to get that. I mean, you know, it's being a human. Um... You can bend down pretty good. Look down. Looks up. Pretty good. Thanks to that kind of a soft body that he has in right here. The arms. I have a... Uh, they're kind of hard to get. You, have, you can actually have like a, a double hinge here. To bend the arm all the way up. And... I feel like it should maybe come up... I mean, I feel like it should maybe bend a little bit more. But more or less I'm satisfied with it. Hands on the, on the ball joint normal. Get a full 360 out of that. So do you want to use that? Be the end, being a human character. I don't think you would. <laughs> you can also get 360 out of the arm. Don't mind being a little tight. And thanks to the the nature of the, of the skeleton, you can get a a little bit of a uh, we call it a butterfly. But when you do it, you typically kind of make this kind of a gap here. But you know, depending on how you if you know if you're going for pictures. You go apart from the front, so it probably won't matter that much. Also, some of the arm you can kind of pull down a little bit too. But yet again, it leaves kind of a gap. It's just kind of ugly. But yet again, you know, from certain angles, it won't matter at all. As far as the waist goes, you got pretty much good control over that. You got uh, you got ab crunch here. There we go. About that far, without breaking the sculpt. But yet again, if you come down too far in the back, you will get this little bit of a gapage here. Let's get that back into place. There we go. As far as uh, waist is concerned, you look up here on the shirt, right here, you do have a waist, but it's kind of hard to access, so most of your turning will actually be done by rotating the top here, like so. Not quite a full 360. And I believe you probably could get a 360 out of this, but um, I don't really want to push it that much. That's just me, but I feel like you could get it if you really wanted to. As far as the legs go, let's go ahead and go down. Let's go ahead and go downtown. Even with this belt, you can still get pretty good spread. As you can see, I mean, honestly, the belt's like not even like an issue. So you get that full trowel, you no know, open up for everybody sees business or Van Dam. So I think that's pretty much good. I mean, what more you want of that? In fact. Because I'm curious, let's go ahead and do that. Let's go ahead and do that kick motion I, I, I like doing, and some of the other viewers like doing as well. I like see if he can sit, do the one foot deal. Let's see. Let's see here. And he does. Pull the camera back. So, yeah, that belt has got is not holding him back at all, which is great. So, all right, pull the leg back down. Uh, you do have a uh, up on the up under shirt here. You got a little bit of a bicep, not bicep, but uh, a thigh swivel, as you can see. Get a knee bend, double jointed, a little stiff right here. But you know, you you mess with enough, you get it, you get it going. But let's see, there we go. As far as leg going forward, go about that far, and go back about that far as you can see 
and the feet are actually pretty good. Get a little bit of a ankle tilt pr enough. I can't see doing any further, but it, honestly, it, hold, it holds pretty good. Uh, toe bend, bend all the way up. And because I was watching Shawshank Redemption the other night, um, you know what the whole thing was? You no, know, you never look at a man's shoes. Well, I'd look at this man's shoes. These are some pretty cool shoes. Double, no, double buckle here. So I just like his shoes better than Keo's. You no, know, Keo had like those. Uh, Johnny Witherspoon Tic Tac shoes. <laughs> so I am a fan of, of uh, uh, yours more dressier shoe. Yeah. All right. Let's see. Let's move the camera back up again. With all that good articulation, I mean, you can pretty much get him into poses that are no befitting of him, especially like his uh, let's say like his uh, normal fighting stance. Let me grab his hands. Let's see here. Grab both hands that I know he normally uses. All right, let's say you take off this fist here. Put this one on. Take off this hand. This fist here. Let's put on this fist. You got to see what I'm doing. And there we go. If I remember how you always stands, it's normally kind of a one of these type of deals where it's like this hand doing this, other hand doing that. The head usually turned. See, waist. It's the way it's going to turn about like that. <laughs> you talking about talking memory here, how he, how he normally stands. Something like this. Let's see here. Actually, no, I think the way is going to go kind of this way. There we go. And head up. Let's see. Um, yeah, let me see, put it back here. I think, yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's basically like his, like his, I think like his normal standing pose, which I think it is. Yeah, kind of video games, kind of how he, kind of how he stands. So, you know, so that that's good. Let's say you want to do his uh his uh fireball maneuver. You take this right here, kind of put it on the ground, take something like let's see here, like that, and turn the hand that way. <laughs> I'm honestly just playing with this toy on on camera on, a, on the guys of being educational. Uh. <laughs> You punch in here like this, like like he just swooped it up. Let's see if it fits in there. There we go. There we go. So something like that. You probably wouldn't change the legs. So yeah, you basically have something like that, and you know, like him kind of throwing the fireball. Trust me, I, I could probably do better if I went on camera. <laughs> yeah. In uh, terms of his uppercut, let's get this out of here. And again, like I said before, you just take take you take this right here and. Pull this piece off and just go. I think you just, just go around the wrist. Full disclosure, this is my first time ever doing this, <laughs> but I think this is how you do it. Yeah, you just put it around the wrist, like so, and re close it up. There we go. So, yeah, that's totally how that would work. Oops, and I think for the most part, the probably have a little higher in this, like around the collar. Cross support the weight a little better. So yeah, this is how that will look. I just gotta put. In, I bet I think I take pictures of this uh, looking better. So yeah, don't don't let my posing right now sway you. But yeah, I think I think overall that does that does look good. Except before it's very similar to Kios. Only thing being different is that you just take it apart and reattach it. And it's kind of, and it's kind of better doing that than have to take off his hand every time you want to do it. So yeah, I think it'd be something more or less like this, if my memory serves me right. <laughs> but you have to kind of imagine maybe you know kind of spinning around. Kind of, I, I know when he goes up, he kind of spins around, like so. So it'd be something like that. I'm sure more spectacular than what I have him doing here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, here we are back with those size comparisons. Uh, here he is with uh, Keo and Terry who have already reviewed. I think for the most part the scale is pretty much bang on. I just truly got back there is because he's the biggest storm I have so far. I do have Rugal Bernstein but I, nah, I just want to grab the guy because he's simply the tallest. I know Rugal probably make more sense. And just for enough for your more small and six inch figures. 
Here is G.I. Joe Classified Duke. So you can see how it looks. Like I always said before, I could throw in a Transformer or two, but I, you know, it, the scale just wouldn't make sense. It really wouldn't. So yeah, this is try to scale over everything else. They are definitely their own scale, and I'm not mad at it. All right, um, if it's not evident by the review, and you no, know, just about every Stormtrooper figure that I reviewed so far, I love it. If you're a KOF fan, you're gonna love this figure. Also, I think um, I'm not sure. I don't know. I'm not sure if SH Figure Arts or some other company has ever done an Yori Yagami figure before. But I gotta tell you, I bet you it's not better than this one. <laughs> I'm almost willing to bet cash money on it. Uh, yeah, th th this is just a really good representation of the character, man. Uh, I just, I, just, I, don't, I really don't believe anyone else ever done, has done a figure of this guy. I really don't. But if they have, please in the comments let me know. For anyone that happens to watch this video, let me know because I'm, I'm curious. Uh, but yeah, the figure's awesome. The, the accessories that he comes with are all good. They all make sense. All befitting of the character. Um, I love the whole almost kind of a kind of a emo goth kind of edge lord '90s take on him. I mean, it's just it's, you know, is it product of his time period? Yoriyagami. Uh, but yeah, I I, I just I, I dig him, you know, just being that you know that, that dark, more twisted, savage version of uh, Keo. Definitely, definitely awesome character, awesome figure. I'm really glad SNK put this guy out because, like I said before, uh, uh, initially when they first created Keo, I wasn't that big on him, and you know, it, over time he grew on me. But I have to say, Yori, when he was first created, I think I took liking to him uh, immediately. So, same with this figure. Take a liking to it immediately. So yeah, if you're in for if you're in for collectibles, in for the KOF line, definitely he's definitely a pickup. I say a must have. Now, before I get out of here, I gotta do my shout outs. If you're not uh, subscribed to the other Jetticons, you're missing out. They put up quality content. I have the links down here below as normal. That's Kato's collection, and Tabi, and Larkin's Lair. All great guys, check them out, please. Tell them Sardo sent you. Also, check out Pack. That's P. Period A. Period K. I'll have a link to his channel down below too. Uh, I'm part of. I'm, I'm also part of that uh, conglomerate there called Three Live Stream. Just hang out, talk a lot of shit. If you happen to show up, do not be easily offended, cause you will be offended. Just so you know, so you can get those sensitive ears. You might not want to be there. Uh, also, check out M3 Reviews. He's part of 3 Live Stream as well. Great guy. Puts out really great content. Kind of like myself. He kind of just reviews whatever. Uh, I think, like myself too, he's kind of like most of the thing predominant Transformers. But honestly, whatever grabs attention. You know, whether it be Transformers, action figures, boobs. He will review it. <laughs> but yet again, kind of like 3 Live Stream. If you're easily offended. You might not want to go to his channel, just so you know. You know, because he's just let me know you've been warned. Also, for my own shameless plug, thank you guys for watching the video. Thank you guys for subscribing. It's so appreciated. Let me tell you, I appreciate it so much. I'm trying to hit 400 before the end of the year. Uh, I can't do it without you guys. I need your help. <laughs> and, uh, just. I just really, just I'm really, I'm really just thankful for all you guys. You know, it comes along Thanksgiving tomorrow. You know, although this video may be posted during Thanksgiving or maybe even after, I'm not sure. But Thanksgiving's around the corner, no matter what. And I'm, 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 I'm thankful for all of you, for all the support I get from the community. You know, from everybody, whether it be Transformers, uh, any figure, store collectibles, whatever. I'm just, collect I'm just very, very fortunate and very happy to be in the community that I'm part of. I just make you know make this whole toy clipping thing so much fun. Thank all you guys from the bottom of my heart. Well, this has been Solomon Spill, also known as the Black Gentleman. Out here doing God work, viewing these figures. Until next time, peace out.